So I'm from the British Oceanographic Data Centre, you know, BODC. I'm going to talk to you today about some of the work that we've been doing around OGC Sensor Web Enablement SWE standards and also around W3C SSN ontologies. I haven't been doing this alone. Um, I've been lucky enough to work with a, a very talented group of developers. That's Andrew Kokonaki, Ray Kramer, um, Gwenelle Monkwife is here. Hi, Gwenelle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, first off, what is um, SWE and what is SSM? Well, to put, sim put it simply, they're standards for making sensors discoverable and accessible via the web. They're metadata rich. Um, so, you can actually find out what a sensor is outputting, uh, what its calibration status is, what's its capabilities at any one point in time. They're machine readable. Uh, which means that you can automate them into workflows. And they are easily shared between global nodes through application programming interfaces, or APIs. So this work started uh, in a project called SenseOcean, and this is really the, the core of our system. Uh, it starts off uh, with a user, potentially a technician, they will enter um, metadata about a sensor that they're going to deploy into our <coughs> local database. In return, they get a unique ID. The sensor is then deployed out in the environment. It transmits its data back to base, including the unique ID. And then when it's back at base, the data and the metadata are matched using that um, unique ID. And then the information goes on to be published on the web in our standards. The reason for doing this is it helps cut down on transmission costs, so you're not actually transmitting all of the metadata and the data back to base. Um, I have a, an example there of our unique ID. Uh, it's web resolvable, and that is essentially the sense of publication on the web. So we initially developed a, a portal, uh, a web user interface, so that um, technicians could actually enter the metadata about their sensors and, and get that unique ID back. Um, the reason we did this is because we wanted to capture the configuration of the sensor at the time that it was deployed, rather than asking for all that information up front. And of course, in the meantime, the configuration could quite easily change. We developed it in ERDAP. Uh, it was a proof of concept. It was a little bit basic, uh, but it did work. Thankfully, there is now a project called OceanIDS, and they've actually developed a new portal um, that uses our sensor database, which is uh, a lot prettier and a lot more uh, visually nicer to look at. Um, actually, the portal that they've developed is uh, to uh, work on a very nice uh, command and control uh, system for piloting gliders. So in some examples of our sensor encodings, this is uh, SWE sensor ML, so this is the, the metadata for the sensor, the actual the publication on the web. Um, this is actually uh, for a CTD that you mount on the exterior of a glider, and I believe that this CTD is actually deployed out in the environment at the moment. And we don't just... Uh, encode sensors, we actually encode and describe the platforms that the sensors are attached to. So this is the actual sea glider that that sensor is attached to. And then on to our data. Uh, we encode our data in observations and measurements, uh, O and M. Um, the thing about observation and measurements is that it was really designed to encode each data value in a data file. So each data value would have its own timestamp and it would have its own parameter. The problem is sensors these days, they generate lots of data values. Um, so you could potentially end up with uh, performance issues. In addition to that, BODC is a file-based data repository so ideally, what we wanted to do was model O and M to point to whole files with many parameters. And we did this. We did this using the outer bound principle. 
So we actually created compound observed properties, uh, and there's an example of one there. Uh, and we also took advantage of the composite phenomenon table within OMNM. So just to prove that it actually does work, um, here I'm making a call to our SOS service. So the SOS is the API that actually sits on top of the ONM and our sensor ML. I'm asking for observations from one of our sensors. Uh, and this is a response I've got in JSON. And as you can see, our observable property is actually the URL to the compound observable property. And then for our result, instead of a data value, we've actually got a link, a URL link to an external data file. Interestingly, this is the link to our one-click download functionality uh, that's on our BODC um, human-readable uh, data search interface. And the same principle could be applied to using digital object identifiers. They're web resolvable, they resolve to resource like files. We also enhance the semantic interoperability of our encodings using controlled vocabularies. We did this uh, in collaboration with an international group called SWE Marine Profiles. Uh, we did this because we wanted to uh, enable the encodings to be able, or to enable machines to be able to understand each other as well as communicate with each other. So we identified collections of controlled vocabularies. Uh, we published new collections of controlled vocabularies to enrich our encodings. Uh, and all of these are available on the NERT vocabulary server. Just in case you haven't heard of the NERT vocabulary server, um, it's hosted at BODC. Um, we host around 300 uh, vocabulary collections. We host a lot of the C data nets vocabulary collections. Uh, we organize all of our vocabularies in a common reference model called SCOS. Each of our vocabularies, each of our terms, are actually represented in an RDF. Um, and they each have their own unique resolvable URI. Uh, we have machine accessible points, so we've got Sparkle endpoints. We now have versioning, so you can actually see history changes uh, to terms. Uh, and we have a good governance structure as well. So each of our vocabularies that are published on the web have been double checked, and this gives assurance to our users. We also have uh, a few web-based tools uh, to help you edit, search, and build vocabularies. Um, these are the ones available at BUDC. Uh, I believe there are complementary tools available at Maris and at CDATANET. So what are we doing now? Um, we're looking to incorporate ERDAP into our system. So ERDAP is a, a data file server. It's really nice because you can easily aggregate and subset data from whole data repositories. And we want to use it to um, uh, deliver parameter subsets and SOS calls. So instead of actually delivering the whole data file, uh, we would actually deliver a parameter stream. In addition to that, um, to help improve the interoperability of these standards, to help improve the global interoperability of these standards, it might be nice to actually have globally unique identifiers for every single sensor, uh, every sensor that is developed. Um, and I'm working with a RDA working group called PIDINST, uh, and we're looking to create uh, digital object identifiers uh, for instrument instances. We just recently um, published our first XML schema um, to do this. Uh, and it is available uh, for comment at the web address provided. So if you would like to comment, please do. Um, we want to get this right. So thank you very much. I think that's all I have to say.